In this video, I'm going to go over a C program that's going to find the character that occurs the least amount of times in a string and prints it out. So we'll make a test string. We'll say car s is equal to a, b, c, d, e, f, g, h, a, b, c, d, e, f, g, h, and a, b, c, d, e, f, g. And in this string here, the characters from a to g, they all occur three times, but h only occurs twice. And we want to find this character that occurs the least amount of times in a string, and we want to print it out. So we'll make a function to do that. We'll say here void print min car, and the function is going to accept a string as an argument. We're going to include the string.h library to help us because the string.h library includes the string length function, which we can use to find the length of a string. And that's going to be useful when you go to implement this function. We're also going to include stdbool.h because that allows us to make Boolean variable types that are either true or false. And we can use one of those when we go to implement this function too. So we'll provide the definition of the function down here. And the way we're going to solve this problem is we're going to have to loop through this string here one character at a time. And for each character, if we haven't already counted how many times that character occurs in the string, we're going to want to count that character in terms of how many times it occurs in the string. So we're going to keep an array of the characters for which we've already counted how many times that character occurs in the string. So that way, when we look at A here the first time, we get a count of how many times A occurs in the string. But when we look at A the second time here, we're not going to want to count A again. So we're going to keep an array called unique. And unique is going to keep track of the characters for which we've already done a count in terms of the number of occurrences of that character. And we're first going to check that array. And if that character is already in the array, we don't need to count it again. If the character is not in that array, we're going to do a count of the character and we're going to add that character to the array. When we do the count of the character in terms of how many times it occurs in the string, we're going to compare that to the current minimum count, whatever that was. And if it's lower than the current minimum count, we're going to make that the new minimum count. We're going to make that the new minimum character. And by the end of that loop then that goes through each character in the string, we'll have identified the minimum character in terms of the number of occurrences. So we'll say here int length is equal to the string length of S. So the first thing we're going to do is get the length of S using the string length function strlen, because that's going to let us know how many times we have to keep incrementing our index variable before we reach the end of the, the string there. And then we'll make the unique array here. So we'll say car unique length. And this array unique, it's going to store the characters that we've already counted in the string. So that way we don't have to count them again. And we have to make it the same length as the string itself, because it's possible that every single character in the string is unique. And if we're trying to keep track of then all the characters for which we've done a count already, we're going to need an array that's potentially as large as the string itself. So that's why we make it that size. We're going to have a variable counted set to zero. And this is going to keep track of basically how many characters have we already done a count for, how many characters are in the unique array already. And then we'll make two other variables. We'll say int min count and car min car. And car min count is going to keep track of what is the count for the character that occurred the least amount of times. And this is going to keep track of the character itself. And we'll be doing comparisons to see is the count we just did, is it lower than min count? And if it is, we're going to make that the new min count. So here we'll make our big outer loop. We'll say for int i is equal to zero, i is less than length, i plus plus. And here's where we're going to go through each character one at a time. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check the character to see if it's already in the unique array. If it is, we don't need to count it again. So we'll say here bool already counted is equal to false. We'll start off with the assumption that we haven't already counted it. And then we're going to check the unique array to see if we have counted it. So we're going to make an inner loop here that's going to go from j equals zero all the way up to j counted. And what we're going to do is we're going to check this unique array up until the number of elements in the array. And we're going to see if the character we're currently looking at at index i is in this array. So if si is equal to unique j, that means we've already counted it because it's already in the unique array. So we'll say already counted is true. And if already counted is true, then that means that we're done. We don't have to do anything more because we've already counted this character. So we're going to say here, if already counted, continue. 
And the continue keyword is something that we don't always see in C, but the way that we're using it here is we're saying that if we've already counted this character, we don't need to do the rest of this work here. We've already done what we need to do with it. And so continue is actually gonna bring up the loop to its next iteration. So it's gonna start off by incrementing I again, and it'll do the, the, the check here with this condition and it'll potentially run the loop body again. But continue is just gonna skip over whatever we've got left here, because we don't need to do it again. So if the character has not already been counted, we're gonna do the count. So we're gonna say here int count is equal to zero, for int j is equal to zero, j is less than length, j plus plus. And what we're gonna do is at this point, we're gonna loop through the entire string and we're gonna count how many times the character at index i occurs. So if s at i is equal to s at j, increment the count. And we're basically saying like, if we're looking at a here, let's go through the entire string now and just see how many times does A occur. And that's what this inner loop is doing, is it's going through the entire string now from zero up until the length, checking to see how many times that character occurs in the string and keeping a count. So then what we'll do, because we've just counted this character, is we'll add that character to the unique array. So we'll say unique at counted is equal to SI. And then we'll say counted plus plus. So we're gonna add the character we just counted to the unique array because we have counted that character now. And we're gonna increment counted to recognize that we've counted an additional character now and that there's an additional character in the unique array. And then finally, what we've gotta do is we've gotta compare this count to see if it's the new minimum count. So we could say this, we could say here, if count is less than min count. So if this is the new minimum count, then make min count equal to this count and make min car equal to whatever this character is. Now, the only thing with this approach of looking at the current count and seeing if it's less than the current minimum count, whatever that is, is we're gonna have to have an initial minimum count. We've gotta start somewhere and say, in, in terms of saying like, this is the character that has occurred the minimum number of times. So we're gonna start off at the first character. We're gonna say that the first character we encounter whatever it is and whatever its count is, let's set that as our initial minimum count, our initial minimum character. And then as we go through and check the rest of the string, we'll update that if necessary, if there's a, if there's a lower character in terms of its count. So here we're gonna say if counted is equal to one. In other words, if this is the first character we've counted, then we're gonna set min count equal to count, and we're gonna set min car equal to SI. Otherwise, else if this is not the first character that we've counted, then we're gonna do a comparison and we're gonna see, well, is the count of the character we just counted, is it less than the current minimum count? If it is, we'll update the min count, we'll update the min character. So then by the end of this loop, we'll have identified the character that occurs the least amount of times, it'll be set to min car, and we'll have identified its count as well. So we can just output that now. So we're gonna say here, if the length of the string is greater than zero, we're gonna print F, percent C, percent D, and we're gonna output the min character and the min count. So what's the character that occurred the least amount of times and what was the count in terms of how many times it occurred? Otherwise, if the length is not greater than zero, we're just gonna kind of warn the, the user of this function and say like error string has zero length. So we'll say error string has zero length. And just let them know that, you know, you gave this function a string that had no length to it. So then we'll call the function and test it out. We'll say here print min car. We'll pass it S as an argument. We'll do a compilation here and then we'll run it. And we get that H is the character that occurs the least amount of the times of the string with a count of two. And that makes sense. So we've created a function here which can find and print out the character that occurs the least amount of times in a string in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.